again, this is one of those things like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't mean to pick on anybody, but when we were Infusionsoft users. Um, oh, no, you can pick tough. on them. Everybody loves to pick on Everybody them. Everybody. Yeah. Okay, all right, great. Let's, yeah, let's throw it out. Let's burn them down. Let's rip uh, shreds but, off those. Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast, where we talk about how to design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. You can find out all the tips, tactics, and techniques you need to get more customers and sell more stuff over at theactivemarketer.com. Now, here's your host, Barry Moore. Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast. I'm your host, Barry Moore. This is the podcast that's all about sales funnels and marketing automation. And in this episode, we're going to be continuing on with our payment series where we look at different payment processors, shopping carts, order forms, everything you need to do to take money online and manage those customers once they've bought from you. In this episode, we're going to be talking to Scott Moran from SamCart. But I just want to preference every one of these episodes with my little disclaimer in there that there is no perfect tool. There's only a perfect tool for your needs. So you really need to know what your specific needs are. So if you want to head back over to episode 63, where we talk about how to come up with the requirements you need uh, for your shopping cart solution, not everybody needs every feature, what's important to you, what's not important to you, head over to episode 63 or head over to the show notes for this episode where you can download our requirements checklist to help you really focus in on those things that are the most important to you before you go shopping for a shopping cart solution. And before we get into this week's episode, I haven't done this for a while, the shameless social proof segment where I read out your reviews uh, on iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, This week, we've got a review from Mr. Hyde in Australia, five stars. He says, excellent resource. Fantastic mix of content updates and tips on several software tools I like. Thrive Themes, and Active Campaign. Plus, expert insights from his guests, all delivered in nicely produced, manageable chunk. I've also watched Barry's Udemy course, and now to try to keep up with his vibrant Facebook group, Five Stars. Well, thank you, Mr. Hyde. I really appreciate that. Uh, And if you don't know what he's talking about, he's talking about the Automation Nation Facebook group, where we discuss all things marketing automation and sales funnels. If you want to join, head over to Facebook, search for Automation Nation. Uh, join up and we'll let you in. It's a great group. Uh, well over 4,000 people now. So I want to thank everybody in Automation Nation for making that a really great group. All right. So let's get into this week's episode on SamCart. All right. I'd like to welcome to this show, Scott Moran from SamCart. Scott, welcome. How's it going, Barry? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Uh, big fan of SamCart. It's really a fantastic platform. So I wanted to get you on, you know, as part of our continuing payment series to talk about different ways to take payments and maximize your revenue online. For those listeners out there who aren't necessarily familiar with SamCart, why don't you give us a, a quick history of the SamCart platform? Yeah, so uh, SamCart is started by myself and my brother. Uh, my brother Brian is uh, mostly who people recognize, right? When we go to events or talk on the stage, stuff like that, usually people look at me and they're like, you look kind of like this guy I know. <laughs> um, it's kind of what we get. So anyway, so I always introduce myself as the uh, the taller, uh, better looking younger brother. But anyway, so the two of us would be co-founders of SamCart. So we, how we kind of got into this, my brother was a hell of a college baseball player. Uh, really, really good college baseball player. I also played, but was not quite as good. So I guess he's got me on that one. But uh, basically, when he got out of school, he was a couple years older than me, um, he started a website called Train Baseball. And so he basically was working at a desk job, hated his life, was, you know, wanted to spend more time with we newly married at the time. And yeah, so he, he started a site to basically just sell digital training. We'd had good coaches and all that, you know, stuff anyway. So digital training about baseball stuff. And that really blew up. When, uh, you know, we, at the time, it was like 2009, I guess is when that kind of like launched. And uh, no, that really, really blew up when we got really good at Facebook advertising, which was brand new at the time. Anybody who's, you know, familiar with the timeline there. So that, that parlayed itself into Get 10,000 Fans is probably a brand that we're maybe most known for. Although now at SamCard, is, I probably eclipsed that as maybe popularity or as many people know it, I guess. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah. So anyway, so, uh, you know, our background was always in selling digital stuff, basically. I mean, we used every tool under the sun. You know, I'm sure every tool you guys will mention in this, you know, series that you're working on, I'm sure we've tried. Infusionsoft, Entreport. I mean, it just a one shopping cart for a long time, just PayPal, maybe really first starting out, you know, all those different tools. And so basically they all just kind of sucked in one way or another. I mean, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't know how casual, you know, your guys' podcasts are, but, you know. Let it, let it fly, brother. Let it fly. Uh, nice. There you go. All right, cool. No, I mean, they just, you know, they're, they're way too complicated or way too 
simple, right? Like one shopping cart is great. It's like this old faithful of tools, but you know, they haven't freaking touched the thing since like 1998, you know, or like, I, I don't even know if modern code languages, whatever would like work with this thing. So no, yes. myself and my brother. Yeah, go ahead. It's like Nanocast. Have you ever seen the back of Nanocast? Yeah. Nanocast. Like, exactly. A, like a great tool. It's like they built it on Netscape. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're like, you know, they use Alta Vista to like, right. you know, look up how to do stuff with it. Anyway. So, um, no, the tools were just, you know, they're either too complex or too simple or, you know, not updated enough. And then, you know, you start, you move into tools like Infusionsoft, right? Which is itself a great tool. But, you know, myself and my brother, like we are not coders, right? Like we are not tech guys. I don't know where you fall on that spectrum, right? But we were always, always dealing with higher end friends or higher end, you know, tech guys and outsource people or whatever to kind of like put together things like checkout pages. And it was just, yeah, it's such a freaking pain. So, and anytime something breaks, I mean, you know, you just have all this stuff, you're hosting your own pages, you're uh, embedding forms, you're messing with code. Anytime you need to make a change, we had to call somebody up and wait on their schedule. You know, it's this whole nonsensical thing, right? If you wanted to, here's what we knew we needed to make a business successful. We knew we needed, uh, you know, a, a beautiful checkout page design that wasn't PayPal, that wasn't standard stock infusion soft, that wasn't, you know, one shopping carts, you know, just g- generic bad pages, right? And we knew we needed one click upsells. So and we knew we needed to integrate with tools that we used, email marketing, you know, whatever. And so we needed to be able to do all that stuff quickly. We need to be able to move on our own schedule and not shell out thousands of dollars anytime we need to make a change. So yeah, we started building Samcart. Uh, what, what year would that have been? I guess it would have been like really, really late 2013, right? So it was kind of like gets a thousand fans was, was, you know, thankfully we were doing, I don't know, a couple million dollars a year in revenue at that point. It was like, you know, definitely a high point. And so, yeah, we actually found, uh, to make a much longer story very short, it was really happened to just run into an old friend of ours who him and a friend of his had just sold this little app um, and they were kind of looking for a side gig. So anyway, so we got them started on what we called user payment at that time, which was basically what is now turned into Samcart. We started using user payment. It was super simple. We didn't need anybody else's help you know, making checkout pages on the fly, one click upsells, seeing how things are working, changing things as we needed them, you know, watching stats and stuff. And uh, yeah, enough people kind of got interested that we built a beta for Samcart. We, you know, went into a paid beta for about a year, I guess, as we were kind of continued to develop it. And yeah, Samcart has now been out of beta, I guess, what, May of 2015. So right now it's, what are we, August, end of August? Is it September yet? Uh, yeah, is it hold on, is know, it September where you're at? You're you're in September and I'm in August. Is that right? Oh no, thirty first of October. Thirty first. Oh dang it, thirty days in August. Oh, so close. Anyway, so um, you know, I guess here we are. Anyway, what mid to late 2016. So Sam Card's been out of beta for a little bit over a year now. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just obviously we've we've hit a tone. I mean, I, we have a you know a thriving user base of you know about seven thousand users. Um, who are most of them, you know, people, the the feedback we get is that people are just like us. They want the same things we want, right? They want, you know, easy tech. They want simple tools that they don't need other people's help setting up. They want to make their own changes when they want to. And uh, yeah, stuff like one-click upsells, order bumps, and, you know, all that kind of advanced payment stuff that people used to kind of look up at people who could do those things. Like, oh my gosh, how are they doing that, right? You know, we're trying to just make that available to everyone, you know, with a pulse, basically, you know, that we could, if you have a SAM card account, you can do all that stuff that you need to, to make, you know, your margins go higher, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, just works with everything else in your business. And that's, that's basically the, the long and short of how it got launched to where we are now. Very cool. Very cool. Like, you know, that's a pretty common story. You know, people want to scratch their own itch or they just get tired of all the tools, tools that suck. But setting out to do SAM card, obviously you guys wanted a certain feature set in there that you weren't finding somewhere else. So what were those must have features when you, when you set out to build SAM card? Uh, yeah, I mean, the must have things again, were one click upsells and integrations with other tools and we needed speed above all else speed. I mean, we are constantly, you know, testing things on the fly. We're constantly swapping out upsells that aren't converting well, you know, but definitely the biggest single thing was definitely one click upsells. So that was really what we were good at. That's the bread and butter of, you know, our businesses that in the past that had, you know, clients and stuff we work with, whoever, right? That was always the the biggest single driver of revenue and profits definitely is uh, was one click upsell. So, you know, we needed to be able to do that, make it simple, know our numbers. And yeah, that's that's those would be kind of the biggest drivers behind why Sam Card exists now. For that odd listener out there who might not know what a one click upsell is, can you explain that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you know, essentially think of it something like kind of like what Amazon does to you every time you check out, right? You're going to check out, um, I bought product A, um, and then basically... Amazon is Amazon and Apple is Apple. And these huge companies are huge companies because they they help their customers spend more money with Amazon or with Apple, right? If it's easy, you'll keep buying stuff. So, you know, I check out, I buy product A from you, and then you're going to give me a chance to buy product B, you know, probably throw a discount on it or whatever. And all I have to do to buy it is click 
one single button. So a one click upsell, you basically have the ability and it's, you know, pretty advanced tech actually on the, on the back end side, but basically to run the card that they just gave you. So they don't have to re-enter credit card information. They don't have to go to a new checkout page. You're just giving people the ability to buy something that easily to just say, cool, run the card. I just used, you know, one click of the button, buy it. I'd, I'd love to buy this from you. And you got happy customers and uh, you got more money. Yeah, for sure. And um, you mentioned another feature there, the, the order form bump, which is kind of a very similar thing. You want to explain what that is as well? Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm trying to think, what's a really good example of an order bump in like real life? That's always try to tie it back. But anyway, basically think of it, you know, you got a checkout page and, uh, you know, down near the buy button after you filled out your credit card, you filled out, you know, whatever other information you need. You know, there's like a little, usually they're cheap kind of things that says like, hey, would you like to also add this to your order, right? Like, I guess McDonald's, right? You, you go in there, buy a burger or something, and they're going to upsell you a little, you know, an order bump would be like, would you like fries with that? It's just a nice, easy way to say yes and say like, cool, add this to my order and then check out. Um, and it's just another cool way to make sure that you're, you know, the incremental bumps, the taking someone from a $20 customer to a $25 customer or a hundred to 110, you know, it's like the little things like that, that, uh, can do big things for your profits. Yeah. I think a good example I saw was, uh, someone was selling a book, you know, whatever it was, $39. And then the order form bump was, you know, for an extra 10 bucks, you want the audio version of the book as well. So like, bingo. Oh, exactly. Boom. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So it doesn't take you to a separate product page. It's just a little tick box on the bottom of the order form that says, oh, you can add this extra thing for yeah. for a little bit of money. Well, you guys have probably seen thousands of checkout pages by now. <laughs> uh, that might be an understatement. Yeah. 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 So do you guys have some guidelines or some must do's when you like, you know, what's what's the thing that you can do to your order form that's going to make it convert better to make it, yeah, to make it more powerful? So- one of the coolest things that we get is, you know, because, you know, thousands of businesses now use SAM card every day. I mean, it's what it's, I guess the last, we were just looking this up, the big, uh, the big number in the last 12 months, SAM card customers have processed $102 million in sales. Nice. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, so we get to watch all that data. Like that's probably the coolest thing about SAM card is we get to just like sit up here, you know, from like the bird's eye view and really, really actually look at what works on checkout pages and what doesn't. So, um, one of the biggest things is the length of your checkout page. So like Barry on your checkout pages that you have out there right now, right? Like what information do you require from someone? Yeah. Usually it's what, like name, email address, obviously credit card info. You know, do you have anything else on there? No, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to make it as frictionless as possible. Bingo. Yeah. So that's a lot of things that, but with other tools that can be a lot more difficult, right? With infusion. I mean, like, you know, they give you this big checkout form and, you know, removing stuff and making stuff unrequired, you know, it takes a lot of time, but with SAM card, it's real, real simple to remove uh, fields you don't need. And the results are crazy. So, uh, one of the split tests that we run is if you guys, if you use your baseline of needing, you know, name, email address, phone number, shipping address, billing address, and a credit card, right? That's kind of our baseline, right? And every time you remove something, this is what happens. So if you remove shipping address from that, you're going to capture 13.4% more sales just by taking away a shipping address. If you're not physically shipping anything, you don't need it, get rid of it. It's a 13.4% bump. And if you can take the extra step and take the billing address out of there as well, it is a 35.1% bump. So 35% more sales just by removing fields you don't need. Isn't that crazy? It's just nuts. And like, it's funny, you know, a couple things we'll touch on this here, right? But it's just one of those things with Sam card. Like if, um, you know, people put all this time and all this love and effort, right. To make their sales pages, their landing pages look, you know, look great and infuse them with kind of like the marketing stuff that we all know, love and, uh, and works. Right. But the checkout page is like this, you know, redheaded stepchild, right. For lack of a better term that people just kind of throw up there and expect to work. So let's see, what's another cool one. Um, let me keep going. Okay. So one click upsells, right? Which we, we talked about, right? So of same cart users, and there are plenty who don't use upsells, right? And then versus the one who do use upsells. If you don't use upsells, right? Then your, your average customer value is whatever product price you're selling, right? I'm selling a, a $100 product. My average customer value is a hundred dollars, right? Can't right. go up from there. But if you introduce even just a single one click upsell, then you are on average going to be making 68.1% higher average customer values than people who don't from one upsell. So not an upsell funnel, not many upsells in one funnel, but just a single upsell offer, 68.1%. So if I use that same example, right? If I'm selling a hundred dollar product and you're selling a hundred dollar product and I introduce one upsell, I'm going to make on average $168 on the same customer that you're left spending or you're left collecting a hundred dollars from. And so again, it's one of those things. Imagine, of course, that's a big bump in sales, but think about profits, right? If I, if our profit margin are the same, you and me, right? And it's, uh, you know, we make 20 bucks on each customer that we sell. Each $100 customer is $20 profit. You know, my profits are 
400% higher than yours. You know, it's like, that's the, the, the kind of mindset that, you know, we like to introduce with Sam Card is let people know their numbers and get in there and, uh, and see that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's a huge bump. 68.1%. Yeah. And the other, the other thing about that too, is that means my cost per acquisition, of the customer can go up and I don't lose money. You know, the, exactly. the person that can acquire the most customers wins, right? So if I can, Bingo. if I can outspend you on my advertising, cause I've got a higher cart value than you do, then I'm going to price people right out of the market. Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. Do you have any stats around, like one of the features I really like about SAM card is the fact that you can have, you know, PayPal and credit card options on the same payment form without sending them off to PayPal and definitely and putting that friction in of sending them off to another site. Do you have any, any stats about how many people choose one payment gateway over another? Yeah, definitely. So actually, so, um, yeah, so we have a pretty one of a kind PayPal integration for anybody listening. Uh, you know, if, like he said, basically, if you you can offer SAM card, or I'm sorry, on a SAM card checkout page, you can offer credit card and PayPal, and uh, our PayPal integration does not take anybody away. So it's kind of everything you love about PayPal, right? Being able to offer it to your customers because they love the security and all that stuff. Um, but without all the stuff that we know kills conversions, like taking somebody away from a page and it's all these, you know, many steps and anyway, whatever. Um, but it really, really interesting stats. So for a long time, we never used PayPal on our own checkout pages because we hated what PayPal did to our conversions. Right. So, but how about this, right? A standard SAM cart checkout page is, uh, you know, if that's our baseline, just, just offering credit card is just our baseline. If you add in PayPal, right, then you are going to look at, I'm sorry, what is it? You're looking at a 19.7% increase in sales by offering both credit card and PayPal. So 20% more sales is what you can be capturing by offering both of them side by side. And so we like that one heck of a lot. As far as uh, how many people are actually selecting one versus the other, it's actually really heavily in favor of credit card, which is really interesting. I thought offering both credit card and PayPal, maybe you'd see like a, you know, maybe a 50-50 split or 60-40 at the most in favor of, you know, uh, of credit card. But it's actually closer to like 83-17 is in favor of credit card. So it's a, it's highly, highly in favor of credit card, which is interesting. I think, you know, if maybe if you'd done the same, if there would have been access to this information, you know, like 10 years ago, I bet that would be totally flipped, totally flipped. But I think, uh, you know, people are getting a lot more used to, uh, you know, buying things online and, of course, all SAM card checkout pages are, are totally securely hosted so that, you know, they got the little the little green lock there in the URL bar, which I think is another great way to, you know, ensure people are safe and, and feeling confident in your buying process, stuff like that. Yeah, another interesting thing. My friend of mine has a like a membership or a newsletter type thing where he sells monthly or yearly subscriptions and he, mm-hmm. he, off, he offers both PayPal and credit card. And he said like the monthly stuff's about 50-50 between PayPal and credit card. Right. But he said when people buy the annual subscription, for some reason, it's like 90% PayPal. It's interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's and another thing. You know, it's like a total... I'm sure that knows numbers. You know, you dive into each individual market. I'm sure they vary wildly. You know, I'm sure there are people like that. I'm sure there are people who are the total flip. And it's uh, it's interesting. It's just nice. You know, we we enjoy being able to allow people to do whatever fits their market best. You know, maybe some people, it's just PayPal. But, you know, whatever it is, we like to be able to offer people the ability to offer PayPal without totally ruining their checkout experience. Yeah, for sure. And another interesting thing, or another thing that you guys do really well, that I think a lot of people don't take into account when they're choosing a payment. So if they're, you know, they're first getting started with payments and they're trying to find a payment or checkout shopping cart software to use that they don't take into account is what happens after the sale. <laughs> so 100%. you start getting, you start getting tens and hundreds and thousands of customers that you've got to manage now with refunds and expiring credit cards and stuff like that. And you guys have just looks like you put a ton of thought into like, how do we manage that customer after the sale? So maybe yeah. can you talk a little bit about some of the features that are there for managing those customers at post sale? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and that's really what it's all about. Again, one of the things that made us you know, I mean, thankfully successful, right? And other stuff that we've done was that, um, you know, just like you mentioned, if if you if I can make more money from the same customer than you can, then I'm going to win in the long run. That's my business can spend more money. I can acquire more customers, you know, and in the end I win. And so part of that, of course, doesn't end, like you said, at the checkout page. So we're talking email follow-up series. We're talking about, um, you know, doing promotions and sales down the road, making it easier for people to come back and buy again. And so one of the biggest things is our, our simple integrations, right? And so, uh, you know, we try to make it as simple as humanly possible, right? For you to keep all of your lists perfectly clean. Uh, I guess, you know, when you think of standard kind of integrations with Aweber or with, you know, Infusionsoft or things like that, you know, other tools might allow you to say, I'm going to add somebody to a list when they buy this product, right? Or I'm going to be able to add this tag to Infusionsoft or Entreport, whatever it is, uh, you know, when they buy this product. But we like to take it 
you know, one step further. So what we like to do is uh, with, you know, let's just say you're integrated with Infusionsoft. When someone buys, you can add multiple tags. You can also remove multiple tags. Uh, and it doesn't end there. You can also set rules up so that when someone, if should they if they cancel their subscription, you can add and remove multiple tags. If a payment declines, you can add and remove multiple tags. If they come back and totally, you know, they refund a purchase, you can add and remove multiple tags. And you can do the same thing with Aweber with lists, right? So you can add and remove people from not only when I, okay, I'm going to add someone to my customer list, but you can automatically remove them from say a leads list when they buy, when they cancel, when they refund, if a payment declines. So, you know, so it's this whole we like to view it as more of, you know, we're, we're helping you manage the entire customer life cycle. Uh, and it's really, really dead simple. Again, really, of course, you know, one of the things that's really big for Sam Card is simplicity. And so we like to say that, you know, you never touch code. It's really as simple as picking things from a drop down menu. So not only are they simple to set up, you never touch any code or anything like that, but we also give you more options to help keep your lists, you know, perfectly segmented, perfectly clean. So you're always talking to people at the right time. Yeah, so most of the listeners would probably be active campaign users. You guys have great Definitely. active campaign integration, like, you know, best of breed. You can add awesome. tags, add tags, remove tags, which a lot of the other cart platforms haven't really given it the forethought you guys have where they just said, oh, if somebody buys something, put them on this list. And it's like, well, yeah. And if anybody listening really to this is works. running, yeah, exactly. Right. I know. Isn't that funny? It's like active campaign is built so you can do all this cool, robust stuff. Right. And then you have to deal with these other tools that limit that, you know? Yeah. So if anybody out there is listening that owns or runs or is involved with a shopping cart tool, just, just stop listening. You guys can just turn it off right here. So we'll just, we'll just <laughs> yeah. keep that secret in our back pocket. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I remember, I remember te- I was kind of playing with this new cart. I won't mention their name, but you know, it was pretty easy to set up a payment page. You could, could do PayPal and Stripe on the same payment page but right once you took the booking it's like if you dove into the cart platform i'm like well where's that purchase i just made where right. where's yeah. that where's that customer and i even sure. emailed yeah. emailed it, emailed them to them i'm like how do i get back to the how do i get back to the purchase and they're like oh no we don't keep that stuff you're going to have to go into paypal and find it you're crazy to to it's, i'm like what <laughs> what the heck I, it's so you know and that's what we keep running into is the more and again you know we're obviously this is our market right we we keep an eye on competition and we have accounts and stuff like that but it's just nuts i feel like there's never really been a tool that's built for someone who understands what we all do every day you know like and that's really like we have many sam card accounts and people who manage them and i'm still in there all the time you know like running orders and adding things to people's orders you know I, this is this is what we do so we like to think that you know this is probably the first and only tool that's been built for people like us that are i want to sell and i need to manage the order i need to see them through to the finish line and deliver products and, you know, add them, move them around my email campaign so I can talk to them. Right. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's crazy. Right. When people just stop, you know, maybe at the, you're driving the the ball all the way down, you kind of stop at the one yard line, you know, it's like, just, just get me to the finish line here. Yeah, for sure. And another thing that if anyone who's ever done subscription business knows is a giant pain in the butt is, you know, when credit card expires and you guys have that big time pre-dunning stuff built in. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So we call it uh we call it subscription saver just because mostly people don't know what the word dunning is. I honestly enough, I didn't really know. Enough. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I laugh. I, I don't even I, know where that came from either. It's it's actually a guy. I actually know. I know the story now because we I was like, what the heck is this? So I always knew what it was, dunning being the process. I'm sure anybody listening, you know what it is, you just never heard it called that. Is um, you know, if my payment declines today, you're gonna try the payment again tomorrow and then again two days from then to again five days from now, you know, whatever until they're officially gone, you let them go. Um, so that process is called Dunning. And so uh, it's after some guy, his name was like Albert Dunning or something, you know, he pioneered this system. But yeah, so no, we have that built into every SAM card account. We call it subscription saver, right? It's a fancy rewording of the same idea. But yeah, basically, so if if I was subscribed to your, you know, monthly whatever, if my payment declines, I'm going to get an email from your SAM card account automatically, no matter you know what time of day or whatever it happens, um, basically with a link that I can update my credit card info right from my inbox, right or right from my laptop or whatever wherever I'm at, um, and we we do that again and again until we save the subscription or until we're you know suffice to say this subscription is lost and you know, um, but then even then it's easy for you to find them. So if you want to follow up manually, that's great. But yeah, SAM card's working around the clock to make sure that all of your subscription payments are totally saved. I think to date, um, what is it? That feature's been live for something like five months. And I think to date it's saved $413,000 for SAM card account users. So we're pretty proud of that one. That's definitely, it's doing its job. And it's another one of those things that, you know, we feel should be built in. We feel like everybody should have access to it. There's no reason if you have a, a system that's running subscriptions, why that shouldn't be doing it's, I can't even imagine trying to manually do that. So now it's, it's, it's a cool one. We definitely like that feature. 
I can because I've done it. It's a pain. Because you've done it. Yeah, it's exactly. a pain in the ass. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a great feature, and 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 you know, it's it's something that that people just kind of you know, it's not on their radar. I'm like, oh yeah, my card expires. Oh yeah. Don't yeah, you don't even know it's killing you until you yeah. find out. You know, two years down the road, you're like, oh my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> like, yeah. You know. And the other thing I really like too is, you know, we kind of touched on it a minute ago was that, um, you know, the, the cart quickly becomes, it's not even a cart really. It's more, it's so much more, yeah, it becomes kind of the lifeblood of your business, right? Like how's my business doing? The metrics that you guys got in there, the dashboard about, you know, how much sales are making, the, the churn, if you're running a subscription yeah, business and stuff like that is fantastic. Maybe can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the metrics yeah. that you guys have on your dashboard? Yeah, hundred percent. Again, this is one of those things. Like, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to pick on anybody, but when we were Infusionsoft users, oh no, you can so pick tough. on them. Everybody loves to pick on everybody. Them. <laughs> okay, all right, great. Let's yeah, let's throw it out. Let's burn them down. Let's rip uh, shreds but, off those. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just it. It freaking we pull our hair out all the time because Infusion is so advanced. All these tools are so advanced, you know. But like, you know, finding my freaking customer lifetime value is like I needed to go hire some guy to write a script and hope it was right. You know, it's, it was just nuts. So no, we like to, uh, right there on every same card dashboard, we, we, uh, um, you know, the things that we make available, like your, your MRR, right. Your monthly recurring revenue, how you just basically how much recurring revenue can you expect in the next 30 days? Customer lifetime value, again, not something you need to go diving for. We love to make sure people know that, you know, right off the bat, your subscription stick rate, right? So I have a subscription, how long on average are people sticking around, which is great for, you know, I want to offer a, a yearly payment option or whatever. You know, you can go find out on average, how long are people sticking around and, and make, you know, intelligent decisions about your business, your card conversion rate, you can break that up by product. So you know how each product is doing, um, your active subscriptions. I mean, you know, we love to make sure that everything you need is right there in one spot. So yeah, we, we love to think that of course, Sam card is about making beautiful checkout pages and giving you those advanced features, but analytics is really kind of, you know, our third pillar, right. Of what Sam cards at its core, what are we offering everyone? And yeah, so we love to make sure all those stats that you guys need and, and, you know, we know you need them because we need them. You know, it's like, again, it's one of those things that I really do honestly think same card's probably the first tool that's truly built for people running, you know, one, two, three men operations by people who run one, two or three men operations. Right. Uh, you know, we don't have time. We don't have, t we don't have teams or staff or analytics, you know, some guys sitting in the corner running data or something, you know, it's like we need tools that make that stuff available. And that's what we like to think we've done with same card. Yeah. And if you don't have those tools, those metrics, those dashboards in your, you know, in your, somewhere in your business uh, right yeah uh, you really not you know if you can't measure it you can't manage it but if it's not given to you like by the by the cart for example that's ridiculously hard to to figure out like you said you've got to write some scripts or have some sort of excel spreadsheet or some oh, sort we, of we show out all kinds of money to, to, to just to find that stuff out yeah so very very cool you, you touched on a little bit there but you know there's everyone kind of the question i get all the time is what's the best tool insert type of tool here you know what's the what's the right, best shopping yeah, yeah. cart yep. what's the best automation mm -hmm. platform what's the best funnel and my my response is kind of always the same there's there is no best tool there's only a tool that's best for your requirements exactly. so yep. you walk, walk into a hardware store and you go hey what's the best tool in here they're going to look at you right. funny right <laughs> so we kind of touched on it but you know who is the ideal sam cart customer who is sam cart i perfect for yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say that Sam Cart is really, in all the people that we talk to, the people who are the happiest with Sam Cart for sure. It is, we're talking about one, two, or three man shops, right? Like we're talking about people who need results. They're doing it. They need to move fast. They need, they need to avoid tech stuff, right? Um, it is 100% for the non-techie, right? If you're a coder, you're a developer, there's some stuff you can mess around with in there. But, you know, really we're looking for people who are like, I don't have time to wait for someone else's schedule. I need to make changes. I need to take action, do stuff now. And uh, the only other thing I'll throw on that is probably people who are less than, you know, like 20 SKUs, right? I'm not Sam Cart's really not for the person that needs yeah, the big, a Shopify, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. The big yeah, shopping, not, the big shopping cart, add these three things bingo. and check it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, we're really, we're looking for marketers who understand the value of, I, I'm selling one thing at one time right now to this person, right? Um, so not that you can't have upsells and sell other products and order bumps that help you sell more stuff, you know, but people who really understand the benefit of, I'm having one conversation with one customer selling them one thing, right? And I'm not, you know oh, you want to buy something? Here's my e-commerce storefront and you can pick three pairs of pants and two shirts and yeah. you know that kind of stuff. That that kind of unfocused marketing attempt, it's really built for uh, men for people who are, I'm selling one thing right now and and they understand you know the benefits of doing exactly that. Fair enough, fair enough. And anything coming down the pipeline, any nice little features you guys want to 
Uh, heck yeah. So let, us know, on, uh, let us in on. Let us in on before they happen. This is the uh, this is the top secret section of the top show. So section. um, everyone, uh, yeah, yeah. all competitors, please leave. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody, stop listening. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So this is a verbal trademark on any ideas. But that's uh some of the cool stuff we have come down the pipe is um we're super pumped up about our Zapier integration actually. So oh, Zapier, nice. uh, for those of you guys who don't know, a tool that helps tools work with other tools, right? <laughs> it's probably the, the weird way to explain that. But basically, you know, if you're using a tool that Samcart doesn't directly integrate with, you could use Zapier as an intermediary for accounting software or delivering physical products or, you know, all kinds of different use cases for that. But uh, Zapier is definitely a cool one. We have a lot of stuff coming for physical product people. Um, so we have some some pretty basic standard physical product stuff, like like you can charge variable you know shipping costs and you can have quantities. People select more than one of something. But we have some really cool kind of, you know, uh, fulfillment integrations and some other stuff like that. Um, we have VAT tax coming. So a lot of people who are EU based and uh, different, you know, VAT taxes around the world, um, something that's going to be built into Samcar pretty soon. And uh, a lot of cool things to do with the checkout page. So we have uh, some pretty cool innovations, I would call them right on, on, on the checkout experience and how that works. And so we're really excited to kind of bring some of that stuff out. So we'll, uh, we'll, I'll play that one a little closer to the chest, but definitely be staying tuned for that. Cause, uh, basically the, the checkout page, as you know, it, some one of those things is you'll have the opportunity to do some very, very cool things, uh, with your checkout experience and, and all with same card signature simplicity. So we're going to be doing some pretty advanced stuff and, uh, making it pretty simple for people. Nice. And when's the uh, Zapier's integration supposed to drop? So we're hoping by the uh, end of September here. So that's a, we have a big promotion actually coming up here in September, and that's uh, the, we're we're on pace right now on par for that to be uh, for that to be wrapped up as part of that big promotion. Very cool, very cool. All right, Scott, we might wrap it up there. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, sharing a bit of the Sam Cart story. And um, obviously, if anybody wants more information, they can just head over to samcart.com. That is the one. Absolutely, Barry. Thanks for having me, everybody. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you guys around the bend. Thanks, Scott. I'd like to thank Scott for taking the time to come on and uh, give us a little bit of the Sam Cart story there. If you want to head over to the show notes over at theactivemarketer.com forward slash 65, there'll be a lot more information there, links to everything that we talked about during the show. And if you want to give Sam Cart a try, you can head over to theactivemarketer.com forward slash Sam Cart and set yourself up with a free trial. It is a really great product. Again, There's only a right product for your needs. So um, there's a very specific need that Sam Card is fantastic for. And if that's you're an online marketer, you sell uh, single products with some upsells, downsells perhaps, or order form bumps, Sam Card is a really fantastic product. If you're running a shop with, uh, you know, 100 different items and you want people to put stuff in your cart and then check out, then uh, obviously Sam Card's not the right solution for that. But a lot of you internet marketers out there, um, Sam Card is a fantastic product product and i would urge you to check it out head over to the actormarketer.com forward slash samcart just set yourself up with a free trial and have a play you can see how good it is which brings me to another point if you are struggling to get your sales funnels set up and humming like a well-oiled machine so that you can design and automate and scale your sales process up then i would urge you to head over to the active marketer insiders the active marketer insiders is a private community where we share tips tactics techniques shared automations templates i provide personalized coaching and individual advice we run a monthly mastermind calls as well with all the latest tactics and techniques and how to implement those more importantly how to get them running in your business quickly uh, if you want to head over to theactivemarketer.com forward slash members, you can find out a whole lot more. And if you put in the special coupon code podcast, you'll get a special discount if you join up, for especially for podcast listeners. Well, that'll do it for this week. We'll see you again next week. In the meantime, get out there and design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. See you, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Active Marketer Podcast. You can find the show notes and all the latest marketing automation news over at theactivemarketer.com.